Hi guys, DoubleHunterXYZ, and got myself a little bit of a treat. <laughs> got my hands on the uh, official DualSense Edge controller that just came out. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I managed to pre-order it months ago. It finally came in the, on the 26th. And, uh, you know, I've been kind of looking forward to this, but you know, I gotta say, just after what I've seen, on some of the reviews, I kind of spoiled myself for I saw some of the reviews already. Uh, I gotta say, though, initially paying $200 for this, uh, I don't know, it just... Comparing that to, like, the Xbox Elite controllers, I mean, I kind of think that's a little bit more overpriced than it really needs to be. Considering that the Elite controllers had four paddles on the back, and this, a substantially longer battery life, here... I mean, it's already knocked down a couple of points, considering there's only two paddles on the back. Which, really in my case, not a huge deal. I, I never really bothered with four, but... Uh, I digress. <laughs> but then, really, uh, the other thing is probably the battery life itself. Um, I mean, from what I've been hearing, probably at best you can get is about maybe five, five and a half hours. Which, comparing that to the original DualSense, uh, I mean, that's... I mean, even the original DualSense has battery issues too I, I mean for my case I, I kind of get maybe about seven I guess but that's with the uh, vibration and haptic feedback turned on but anyway uh yeah I've been kind of looking forward to the DualSense Edge either way uh ever since honestly ever since uh managed to get my hands on the uh if you remember this the back button attachment for the PlayStation 4, the DualSense, the DualShock 4. Uh, I kind of got interested in, you know, kind of pro-based controllers at that point because seeing how it actually did kind of improve my gameplay a little bit, I'm kind of wondering how an actual, uh, actual pro-based controller would do. <laughs> Granted, I know some already existed, but I mean they were mostly kind of licensed off to third parties like uh, like Razer or or Scuff. But I mean, this has kind of been made directly by Sony themselves, so yeah, can't wait for it. <laughs> Gotta say though, immediately the box is pretty heavy. <laughs> I thought it was gonna be pretty light, but not. Okay, my best to do this here I, I don't really have a good setup with the microphone and the camera right in front of my face unfortunately but this is the best I can best I can do <laughs> I don't really do too many vlogging videos that often all right well wow. nice PlayStation box all right oh uh, okay oh well, well. God, it's heavy. <laughs> it is heavy. Okay, well, before I open this, what else do I have here? Just an instruction manual, that's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it, just one instruction manual. Just kind of give me basic instructions, and I guess just how to pair it up, you know, I guess all the features. Talking about the connector housing, the stick caps, the function buttons, the, the modules, the stick modules, the uh, the stop sliders in the back, the actual back buttons. <laughs> kind of tells me what comes in the product itself. Okay, okay. Uh, talks about the carrying case and all the accessories. <laughs> which are sold separately, by the way. <laughs> to make that clear, they are sold separately. All right. Yeah. Yeah, for the most part, uh, yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> okay. Anyway. Let's see here <laughs> I say they do a pretty good job wrapping this up I mean for two hundred dollars I wouldn't expect it I gotta say the uh 
It's pretty uh I guess it's a pretty durable case actually. I thought it was gonna be honestly, I thought it was gonna be like a cheapy like a cheapy cloth case or something like that, but no, it's like a like a hard shell case. <laughs> Which I mean that's good anyway, you know, if you're traveling. And of course I got a little flap in the back, I guess. To, well I guess it's head on Velcro. Yeah, so I guess if you want to just plug in put it in the cable, you can just charge it in while it's in the case. That's a good thing. Okay. Well, uh, as you can see, <laughs> yeah. Well, for one thing, at least we got the cable on top. But you gotta say it's a pretty uh, pretty well braided cable actually. Uh, I mean, better than what I get out of the uh, actual. Dual sense, anyway. <laughs> Just a standard USB cable. Uh, nothing, nothing else here. Okay, that's fine. All right. Let's see, I'm gonna say it's pretty, pretty decent length, actually. Well, I mean, actually, I guess it's a good thing. It's it's good at length. Uh. Maybe because of the fact that of the very short battery life, it's almost like it wants you to try to it wants you to play it plugged in, which you know I mean to be a you know I, I guess you could probably say it, it might be a good thing to have a controller plugged in at all times because it helps reduce on uh, on latency, you know. <laughs> so I mean to to be fair, at least they did a good job with that, you know, having a long cable so you, you could probably reach. But this has got to be at least like, I mean, this has got to be like at least a six foot cable or something like that. <laughs> so I mean, I could probably just reach it across and just play with, you know, plugged in if I really wanted to, you know, if you really want to get the most out of it to reduce the, uh, to reduce latency. Okay. Uh, yeah, of course. Of course, you can also get the uh, the little locking mechanism. Which I think that just plugs into the top of the controller. So it just plugs into the top of the controller and it just allows you to... Uh, I think that's what it is. It allows you to just hook up the cable more easily. Of course you got the different, got different paddles, you got the different domes. There are different sizes of domes anyway, so hey, that's a good thing. Alright. Let's see. You know, I kind of do like how they kept it the same, uh, the same design choice. Anyway, the uh, you know the, the the white and black. Honestly, I kind of think this looks a little bit, uh, a little bit nicer. I mean, it just kind of feels. Well, I mean, comparing it to my original. Sense, I mean, it's uh, yeah, it's a little bit heavier, not, not a whole lot heavier, but it, like has a little bit more weight to it. But uh, I mean, like, I don't mean, like the design wise, I mean, I like how they etch the uh, I kind of like how they etch the uh, PlayStation symbol buttons on the touchpad, but yeah, I mean, for the most part, functionally, it's about the same, <laughs> of course. It, well, I also have some texture on the uh, L2 and R2. Uh, of course, you can plug in the uh, triggers. Well, I mean, you can adjust the triggers. Yeah, <laughs> which would help. I mean, whenever I was using the back button attachment back on the PS4, I was mainly using it for mostly um, mostly Call of Duty. A little bit of Rocket League as well, so it could help. Uh, yeah. Let's say <laughs> that's one of these out anyway. Gotcha. I probably should have read the instructions, but well, we'll see. So, I mean, for the most part, I'm just matching the uh, the ends to the back of the controller itself. Which, 
I mean, they fit pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, they fit pretty well. Yeah, and just kind of had just open release. So not they're not really too difficult to put on, luckily. And of course the function buttons on the bottom are actually not uh not that bad too in placement wise. And of course I have a release button on the back. Which Which, uh, I need to read into what that really does, <laughs> but, yeah. Okay, well, yeah, for the most part, it just feels just an addition to the, uh, to the, uh, original dual sense, And I guess with also with this, probably just snap onto the back. Yeah. Okay. I like think for the most part, yeah, it would just it would just snap onto the back. So you can just plug in the wire. If I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Alright. You know what? Let me give me uh well no, give me a few minutes to try to set this up and I guess I'll just test it on my my console. See how it is. Okay. So I have the uh dual sense edge plugged up. I'm using the the dome caps. Also using the dome uh, back buttons as well. Just trying to get a feel for it. And yeah, I have it plugged in as, as of this point, which... Yeah, they, I mean, the cable is pretty long. <laughs> which I do appreciate that, you know. But at least it's not going to be... At least it reaches from where I'm sitting anyway. It's not like it's extremely short, like... Ooh, I don't know, like the NES Classic. <laughs> if you remember the, the cable size on that. Anyway, uh, if you go to the... Go to settings, go to accessories, it opens up a DualSense Edge menu. And in here... Uh, well, I mean, it starts out with the, the tour thing. Just kind of give you instructions on what the DualSense Edge does. How it's customizable. Uh, tell me what the function buttons do. Which... Not bad, for the most part. Um, up to date on the software, for now anyway. So, I was going to try to create one for Rocket League. I got one for a shooter, but let me see. So I guess in this menu you can customize button layouts, and I guess you can actually customize more than just the back buttons. You can customize any button on here, surprisingly. Alright, I'm going to be doing Rocket League. I think it was... my setup was like this, having the rear view, and the boost, apply. Uh, you can adjust stick sensitivity. Which, I mean, you can go for like a sensitivity curve, kind of tells you which one, which one does what. Which, honestly, I haven't really tried any of these. I mean, a lot of them kind of tend to go for in terms of shooters. Because, I mean, let's be real, most people are going to be using the, this controller for mostly shooters, first-person or third-person shooters, whichever. But, I guess for right now, I'll just keep it default. And, uh... Yeah, of course, you can... Yeah, you can customize a little bit of stick drift, too. Or, you can customize the dead zone. Which I kind of would recommend a little bit. Oh. 
Because, I mean, it is quite sensitive, to be honest. But, I mean, you can jump as high as 30 if you want. Yeah, I mean, you could just adjust it as much as you want. And customize them for both sides of the sticks. Uh, you can also customize the trigger dead zones, I guess, starting from any point. Well, I, well okay, I do have the stoppers on this, so if I were to go back to the... If I go back to the, the most pressure ones here, I can... I mean, I could adjust starting from a certain angle before they become responsive, I guess? So I guess once I reach 20, then it will start to activate. And I guess I can actually lower this even more if I want. Anything outside of the 75 zone would be not active, I guess. <laughs> I mean, who knows? Probably something I had to really play with. Uh, yeah, they can also just apply the same settings for L2 and R2. I mean, if you wanted to have separate, uh, separate dead zones for each trigger, you can do that. And then, of course, you can customize vibration and trigger intensity. Uh, but yeah, that should be it. Yeah, I guess something like that, for the most part. Yeah, so really, profile-wise isn't that bad. Function menu, display function menu, yes. Display content. I guess if you hit the function button, it'll just tell you you can switch profiles. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it will help. It will help. <laughs> Alright, so, I mean, for the most part, it's pretty straightforward and customizing functions and buttons and layouts and stuff like that, so pretty similar to any other Pro-based controller that you may have used before. Alright, so, I've been trying a variety of sticks, a variety of back buttons, kind of trying to do different combinations, even adjusting the sensitivity, the dead zones. Taxi. 
And, uh... I mean, for the most part, it's not that bad. Grenade out. Oh, doesn't help when I get double teamed. <laughs> Oh, so many campers. Enemy UAV up Changing mag. Go 
Crossing done! Our UAV is orbiting the area. Hostile counter UAV overhead. Your six. Our UAV is all in the area. Wow, what the heck? <laughs> Package deployed. We've lost the lead. Frag out! Hostile SIE incoming! Activating suppression mine here! Hostile UAV in Loading. the area. near your position. Oh. Friendly UAV online. UAV is bingo fuel. RTB at this time. Target sighted! Frag out! Frag out! Enemy bomb drone is in the area. Friendly UAV on station. Frag out! Oh. Oh. 
suppression mindset. Take One minute gas. left. Oof, close game. 30 seconds remain. Now chopper gunner is inbound hot. All right, a bad, a bad. Solid work. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, you know, overall, I'm trying a different set of combinations of uh, sticks, paddles, adjusting the sensitivity, kind of doing a lot of things here. And, you know, I, I still need to kind of play with it for a little bit just to kind of get the feel of it and kind of get used to using back buttons again. But, um, yeah, you know, I mean, for the most part, it, it works pretty well. It does work pretty well. <laughs> uh, I mean, like I said, I, I still just got to practice more on it. But honestly, it just kind of feels pretty natural, like a regular, just any ordinary dual sense controller, but with just added functionality. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it actually works pretty nice. I give it that. So, uh, I would probably say, uh, I don't know, as, as of right now, I would probably say if it's worth the $200, I would honestly probably say no. Maybe wait until it maybe gets on a discount or something. Because honestly, two hundred dollars is kind of a lot to ask for for a, a pro-based controller that not everyone's gonna really be getting into, and it kind of also depends on preference, a, like a lot on preference. <laughs> but um, well, I don't know. I'd say maybe, maybe borrow it from a friend, maybe just try it out. Yeah, you never know. Maybe you might be interested in it, but honestly, I would probably say it'd be better waiting for like a discount or something. Because I, I think it'd probably be more worth it by then, but uh, granted, just from first impressions, overall though, it's still not that bad of a, a controller. Uh, I'd say if you can try it out, go for it, but I, I'm not suggesting to go and spend $200 when it's... Uh, when we are still not quite sure the capabilities of the DualSense Edge, but... But kind of leaving it on a positive note though, I mean, considering to be the first Elite you know, base controller by Sony itself. You know, it it actually doesn't. Uh, it, it, I mean, it actually doesn't seem too bad. You know, it works pretty well. Don't have any issues. That's what I can tell. <laughs> so, hopefully, it will last for a good while. I'm hoping. <laughs> All right, guys. This is Double Hunter XYZ, and until next time.